Welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, October 8th. So glad you can join us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. The Chief Executive Officer of Washington University Barbados Inc. has been remanded to Her Majesty's Prison Dodds until Monday, October 15. Rayo Venkata Gopi of No. 11 Falton Crest, Tuscany, Old Berry St. Philip, appeared before Chief Magistrate Christopher Birch today at the St. Matthias Magistrate's Court on multiple charges. The 42-year-old was charged in the District C jurisdiction with three counts of evading liability at Casa Grande Inc. for three dishonored checks totaling 210,000 Barbados dollars. He was also charged in the District A jurisdiction with one count of evading liability at Furniture Li Limited TS Builders Value Mat for one dishonored check totaling 30,000 Barbados dollars. Gopi is being represented by Roger Ford QC. A pungent order at the Barbados Statistical Department forced workers to evacuate the Warren St. Michael office this morning. Acting Director of Barbados Statistical Services, Aubrey Brown, says it's a recurring problem that has been affecting staff, particularly on mornings, for some time now. And this morning, it seemed to be excessive to the extent that two staff members became uh, ill. Mm -hmm. and that prompted staff to more or less evacuate the office. So mm -hmm. that's as much as I can say on that. Right now we're trying to get the relevant authorities involved to do some kind of independent investigation. We informed the property manager and the property manager came and checked, but she has to get in contact with her head to, to follow up. And their head was trying to reach the Ministry of Labor, the if I have a safety unit uh, mm -hmm. to, to at least uh, coordinate what kind of action can be taken. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to reach the environmental protection the department to get them involved in the investigation as well and housing. So I'm trying to make contact with those person, those entities at the moment. Prime Minister Mia Motley has outlined plans to cushion the blow of the debt restructuring exercise on the island's pensioners. There has been a strong public outcry from the nation's pensioners who now stand to receive a haircut on interest payments and payments over a longer period on the government papers. Scores have publicly complained that they were relying on their investments for retirement income and would now be forced to live on reduced income. Speaking at a Barbados Labour Party branch meeting of the Christchurch South constituency last evening, the Prime Minister said vulnerable pensioners will receive a helping hand. We accept that especially for persons who are 75 or 80 or 85, that they can't live and see easily. That they can live, sorry, but they can't see easily that they're going to live another 15 years. And therefore, what we will do is to work over the next few weeks to see how those persons who are particularly in that position at that elderly age, who need cash in the short term, can be assisted, while those who don't need cash in the short term but are happy to get it in the medium term can hold the instruments. And our role as government is to try as much as possible to keep you whole. Her announcement comes as opposition leader Bishop Joseph Atherley urged the government to revisit its debt exchange regime. In a statement issued today, he argued that the regime compromises and severely erodes the standard of living for pensioners and he maintained that their plight should have been considered when the program was being framed. Obesity and the incidence of chronic non-communicable diseases are major health concerns in the Caribbean, with some Caribbean countries spending more than 60% of their healthcare budgets to tackle the problem. President of the Healthy Caribbean Coalition, Sir Trevor Hassel, says while lifestyle changes can contribute significantly towards reducing the incidence of such illnesses, there are several economic and other constraints hampering the process. Challenges that frustrate healthy living include, among others, international and regional trade policies, climatic and environmental factors, <coughs> individual choice, the quality of health services, 
social norms, attitudes, support, and interactions, and even educational and job opportunities. Physical inactivity and a healthy diet are closely linked to agriculture and climate change, with the latter impacting on NCDs and on NCD health from heat stress, floods, droughts and storms, food insecurity, air pollution, and soil degradation with depletion of micronutrient content of fruit and vegetables. So Trevor was delivering the feature address at the start of Caribbean Week of Agriculture at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center. It is a week-long series of conferences on different aspects of the agricultural industry. Childhood obesity will also be a major item on the agenda. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization's representative in Barbados, Lystra Fletcher-Paul, gives some insight into how the delegates will address the topic. Because we believe to address the problems of obesity, particularly childhood obesity, we must start by inculcating good, healthy, lifelong eating habits from very young. But school feeding is more than just providing one healthy, nutritious meal a day. It's about nutrition education. It's about linking farmers to markets. And it's also about promoting intersectoral linkages, linking the ministries of agriculture, health, and education. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To the region now, the death toll from a 5.9 magnitude earthquake that hit Haiti over the weekend has climbed to at least 15 people with 333 more injured. Authorities released the updated figures today as rescue crews worked to help victims terrified by strong aftershocks. Haiti's Civil Protection Agency said in a statement it will soon deploy 70 soldiers to the Nordquest and Atibonit provinces that were hardest hit. It has already sent 14 soldiers along with nurses and doctors to the area over the weekend. Thousands of people along Haiti's north coast have dragged mattresses and chairs outside, fearing new aftershocks. On the international front, Florida's governor mobilized National Guard troops and ordered Gulf Coast residents to head inland or get ready to evacuate as Hurricane Michael churned toward the area today. Forecasters predict that the system will strengthen rapidly before making landfall on Wednesday. More in this report from Reuters Television. Hurricane Michael is a monstrous storm and the forecast gets, keeps getting more dangerous. Today, I formally asked President Trump to issue a pre-landfall disaster declaration that will allow us to draw down more federal resources. Hurricane Michael will bring deadly storm surge to many areas, even those outside the path. The National Hurricane Center is forecasting storm surge to be between 8 to 12 feet. 8 to 12 feet. That means the water will come miles on shore and could easily rise over the roofs of houses. Michael can still change direction and impact any part of our state. Today is the time to get a plan. Do not put it off. There isn't any reason to not be prepared to keep your family safe. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.